Melissa here from Girl Gone Fishing and I am on my way to the boat ramp for my first kayak bass fishing tournament of the year. But I already forgot my routine. I forgot to do this intro back at my house. So I'm sitting at a stop sign at two little uh, country roads here and figured this would be a good safe time to do it. And uh, I'm really excited about this tournament. Uh, I, I feel like I'm going into it a little more calm, a little more organized, and a little more prepared than I have the last couple years. Um, I, I used to feel a little frantic and uh, not quite sure what I was doing. I worked really hard last year on kind of emulating what the real anglers do and I had worse results. So maybe that was just the learning curve. Um, maybe the work I put in will pay off this year, but this year my plan is to try to do a little more with my mind, a little more freedom in techniques and stuff and try to figure out what feels good and natural for me. So I'm going to Rocky Fork Lake. I've gone, I've had three tournaments on this lake before and haven't done really well on it. And uh, it keeps popping up on my two big trails, the Cincinnati Kayak Fishing and the Buckeye Kayak Fishing. So I'm excited to give it another chance and maybe this will be my breakthrough tournament where I make friends with Rocky Fork and uh, get to take pictures of lots of bass today. So that's the plan, fingers crossed for a good day. And I'm just really excited to get out there and get out on the water and see what I can do. So I'll see you guys at the boat ramp. Well, in true Melissa fashion, I went to the wrong lake this morning. I got there an hour early, which is great, but it was the wrong lake. How that happened? I Googled last night, North Shore Boat Ramp, Rocky Fork Lake. And apparently it brought up North Shore Boat Ramp, East Fork Lake. And I didn't even bother to really read it and check it. I just trusted that it was the right one, clicked it and uh, went there this morning. And that was pretty dumb of me. So I should have double checked it. I should have used my brain. And here we go. So it was uh, 50 minutes from where I was to the actual lake. I'm not launching where I wanted to fish anymore. I'm launching in a place that I've been to before because at least I, you know, kind of know if I'm going in the right direction for that one. And it's on the South Shore. I wanted to start on the North Shore, but at least I'll be on the right lake. Wow, what a start to my tournament season. I get to go fishing now. I'm excited about that. All right, hope I make it. Hope I see you at the boat ramp. Your destination is on the left. Well, I'm at the right lake now, uh, not at the boat ramp I wanted to start at. I was gonna start at the North Shore boat ramp, but with all the mess with the East Fork Lake, and uh, I just came to the South Shore boat ramp because I'd been here before and I'm comfortable with it. So um, it throws my whole fishing plan out the window, but maybe that's a good thing. Maybe I just need to go fishing, but that was a 30 minute setup. So good thing I practiced yesterday. I think that was the fastest I've ever got this thing ready, which probably means I'm missing something important. But at this point, I don't care. I'm going fishing. All right, let's get on the water. First launch of the season. That was hard. I think that new tape I put on the bottom makes it so the kayak doesn't slide on the boat ramp. Now I know that this isn't gonna work <laughs> because water temp is currently 47 degrees and I'm gonna start off with a, a walk the dog bait just because I have to. This is a big kind of shallow uh, cove at this, this front of the cove here. So I'm just gonna throw this around for maybe like five, 10 casts as I pedal through this area and see if we get something. If not, I'm gonna move on. I know you're not supposed to get top water and cold bass because they don't have the energy to like charge up and get it, but maybe I would be mad at myself if I didn't try. So now I'm throwing around a square bill. This is the Strike King 1.5 KVD. It's the hard knock version, so it's got one bigger rattle in there, and uh, it's uh, it's not working yet but it, it might. <laughs> so, and I'm throwing it on my Little Miami Outfitters Proteus rod. This is a medium heavy, fast action, seven foot rod. So I really like these. They're made locally and uh, they're fantastic rods. So, the more I throw it, the more I appreciate it. I usually use this rod for my chatterbaits, 
but I switched it up today. I really was hoping the square bill would be uh, doing all the work getting the fish because I love a good square bill bouncing off the wood bite. Since the water is super muddy, I mean like really muddy, I'd say a couple inches of visibility if, it, if that, uh, the bass are probably going to be hiding like really close to cover. You know, if, if they can't see what they're doing, then I picture them kind of like putting their back against something solid for protection. So then they only have to worry about what's in front of them and not what's coming from behind them. So I get it. I sympathize with the bass. <laughs> My very first in-person kayak tournament. I was fishing down at Cedar Creek Lake in Kentucky with the bluegrass kayak anglers and I was freaking out. Like, I was really nervous. Uh, I, I always had this irrational fear like the lake monster is going to get me. So <laughs> I backed my kayak up on a point so that I had kind of like a, a bluff wall behind me and then fished out in front of me, you know, just for a little break from feeling so unsafe out there on the water because I was just so not used to it. I was so sketched out and I ended up catching a giant fish and tying for big bass. So I finally decided that after fishing that really nice bank kind of flat with like all that wood, got nothing, tried a square bill, a lipless crankbait, a chatterbait, and a jig. Yes, I even tried a jig um, and just didn't get anything. I uh, did see one place where it seemed like there was something on the graph, but couldn't get anything to bite. So almost two hours there, I decided I had to make a move and I just went ahead and bit the bullet and I'm crossing the lake back to the sheltered side, which is where I was going to fish originally if I had gone to the right lake this morning. So taking the opportunity to try to thaw my fingertips out, they are so cold that when I pull them inside my glove they're actually painful. So water temp is uh, 48 over here, so we're on the right path, uh, it's a degree higher than over there. See, I knew I shouldn't have been over there. The north wind is just pounding this cold water into that bank. The fish are all tucked up over here, nice and warm. I'm gonna catch them over here. My lips are going numb. I really love how maneuverable this lynx is. Do you see that lure rescue? In and out, never touch the rocks or the trees. Well, it's two o'clock. We have one more hour in the tournament and I still have zero fish. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I don't know. I'm just gonna keep going, covering water. But right now, I'm trying to do, uh, it's a bluegill covered colored jackhammer. I like the gold blade. And uh, I've tried black and blue. I've tried with the creature. I've tried red, I've tried white. So I've tried a lot of these. Don't know why I keep trying them, <laughs> but it, it allows me to cover water. So I'm alternating between this and my 1.5 square bill. And right now I'm throwing this on my St. Croix Avidex. And this one is a seven foot medium heavy fast action. So I love St. Croix rods. Avidex was my favorite. Unfortunately, they just stopped making them. So I don't know what I'm gonna want now, but I'll hang on to these for as long as I uh, manage to not break them. Love them. Man, it just never did warm up today. Well, since I'm not having any luck getting a bite on any kind of moving bait, no reaction bite whatsoever, I'm switching over to a Senko on a shaky head, just a standard five inch Senko, green pumpkin, black flake. And I have this on my St. Croix Avidex spinning rod. This one's my only Avidex spinning rod. All my other spinning rods are St. Croix Mojo Bass. Wish it would catch me a fish though. Well, I've almost made it back across the lake. There's only 30 more minutes in fishing and I wanted to hit this shore again. It was probably a bad decision because that took me a lot longer than I thought it was gonna take. But interesting fact, this says I'm going at 2.5 miles per hour right now. So it's, 
it's a long enough pedal that I was just going for like steady, not sprinty. But I can definitely tell my legs haven't done this all winter. Totally different muscle than you use for skiing. I'm gonna have to spend a little time trying to figure out what I did wrong here. I mean, other than going to the wrong lake in the morning, but I don't think that affected it too much. I was only a little late, but it did change my plan totally. I had to start on the other shore. Didn't get to hit the spots in the order that I'd carefully mapped out. I mean, even now, water temper, water temp is still only 49 degrees. So I don't feel like the bass have come up. Maybe if anything, staging. So I've been trying like the deep end of points and stuff. Anywhere there's like kind of a flat that comes out, like, you know, where that flat drops off. I've been trying there. I haven't even seen anything marked on my fish finder. I don't know where they're hiding. I've caught a lot of trees, a lot of trees. <laughs> and some of those trees felt like fish, but they weren't. <laughs> Well, that alarm means it's three o'clock, tournament's over, line's out, no more fishing. Oh, what a bummer. I'm really kind of frustrated. Oh my God, you gotta be kidding me. This isn't gonna count. I can't believe it. I can't believe I just hooked the fish the second line's out. is my three o'clock bass. I just took the entire tournament and didn't catch a fish and caught one, caught one the second after the lines out alarm went off. Well, there's my useless fish <laughs> that I caught after lines out. All right, gonna put them back. Thank you, useless fish. So after all that, I finally get a bass one minute after lines out, or actually the same minute as lines out. Got it on the chatterbait. Water temperature has gone up to 50 and a half. So maybe that helped. Well, that was really frustrating. I mean, I tried everything I could think of. I think I covered a lot of ground. I, I might have been able to move a little more, a little faster, but I made a lot of casts. Um, you know, I kept the lure in the water. I kept trying. I tried a bunch of different things. I, I don't think I got stuck on anything, but didn't find any fish. So <laughs> the really frustrating part is the one fish I did finally catch, I caught at 30045, which means lines out was 30000, and that's the end of when you can take a fish picture. So I was three quarters of a second late, and uh, I got a picture of him anyway, and the picture's 302, so I wasn't even rushing at that point because I knew he didn't count, but how frustrating is that? I mean, I guess it's good, at least I got a fish, <laughs> but ah, <laughs> it's like add insult to, to already screwing up, but I had a great time. I was really glad to be out there, and uh, I want to say thanks so much to uh, Strictly Sailing Kayak for always supporting the whole angling community and the kayak community, and specifically me and my Hobie Lynx. Thank you guys so much. I really like my setup, and unintended consequences of that tape I put on the bottom of the Lynx, it does not slide on the boat ramp. It does not slide on my roof rack. It's like rubberizing to the concrete. It's crazy trying to pull it up the ramp was like really hard but uh i'm really in interested to see what everyone else caught because the tournament standings are offline so i'm going to go to our little measure in at uh, big ernie's pizza and uh see what happens so thanks to cincinnati kayak fishing for running the tournament i'm really glad to be back out there on the water it's been a while and uh, thanks for watching i'll see you guys on the water on the next one